Hey everyone, good morning, I'm Davide, and today I would like to show you Data API Builder. Data API Builder is a tool that we just released a couple of weeks ago and that helps you to create efficiently modern application, basically turning any table, view, or store a procedure, or even collection, if you're using a NoSQL database, into an API, and more specifically, a REST or GraphQL API. Now, why REST and GraphQL API are important? Well, REST and GraphQL API are used by modern developers uh, to create modern solutions with the front-end communicating with the back-end or even have the microservices in the back-end communicate with each other. And today, thanks to the API Builder, you can use REST and GraphQL API also to communicate with the database. This will make your life so much easier because you don't have to worry about installing drivers or library in your machine. And no matter what uh, system, uh, language, or framework you're using, you will be easily able to connect uh, and query the database base, no matter what is your preferred uh, tool or language. Now, let's go and uh, try to publish this table, this simple to do table. The only thing I need to do is um, actually prepare a configuration file that I have already uh, prepared here and uh, just uh, configure it so Data API Builder can understand what needs to be published and how. And in fact, here you see that I am publishing my table and I'm defining the permission because Data API Builder supports authentication and even authorization. And in fact, here through the policy, we can define exactly who will be able to see what, not only in terms of published table, but also in terms of items inside the table. And once we have configured our configuration file, the only thing we need to do is do dub start and the API builder will start and provide the REST and GraphQL API for the table I just published. And remember, I'm saying table, but it could be views, store procedure, or uh, even uh, for NoSQL databases, a collection. Now that uh, the API Builder is started, uh, I can use my favorite REST client. In this case, I'm using Insonia. And as you can see, I can make a typical REST request. In this case, I'm asking to get uh, all the data from my to-do. And actually, I'm just asking the first five ordered by position. And it's just working very nice. Um, I can also use uh, GraphQL, of course, uh, and also GraphQL will return all my data. And as you can see, I'm only seeing the public uh, data here, even if in the table there are other rows belonging to other people, because by default, I said that uh, as anonymous user, I can only see the public data. And uh, in both GraphQL and REST endpoint, we support pagination, filtering, ordering, and selection. So you don't have to worry about implementing those features by yourself. In addition to that, I want to highlight that uh, if you have uh, the need to authenticate people, you can just use Azure Active Directory. So we integrate with Azure. It's very easy then to use the role that someone assigned to you once you have logged in to, for example, define some specific behavior through the policies uh, so that uh, you will be only allowed to do what you need to be able to do and no more, which is super important for building a modern and secure application. That's it. Once you, the API Builder is running, you literally don't have to do anything else. It will take care of everything for you. As you can see, if, if you have configured the API Builder to run in development mode, you can also see exactly what query is sent to the database. So you always have full control. And uh, I would say that for this episode, uh, that's all that you need to know. Just make sure you go and download the API Builder and try it uh, for yourself at aka.ms slash DAB. Uh, it's open source. Uh, it can be easily installed using .NET tool, or you can even also run it in a container. That's all for today. In the next episode, we will see how we can publish the API Builder and uh, consume it uh, using uh, our JavaScript front-end application. So we'll configure course, we'll make sure that everything works nicely between our front-end and the back-end provided by the TP Builder and the database. And then in the third episode, we'll also see how we can deploy everything on Azure. So follow me and just enjoy life with the TP Builder. See you soon.